Hello, my name is Uday Popat. I'm a professor of stem cell transplant and cellular therapy at the University of Texas, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm going to talk about how can transplant outcomes for transplant in patients with myelofibrosis be improved. And as transplant doctors, we do a few things to change the outcomes or improve the outcomes in patients. First, we can change the conditioning regimen. Second, we can change the graft versus host disease prophylaxis. And third and final thing, we can change the supportive care. Now the supportive care has been improving with improvement in HLA technology, so we have better matched donor. With improvement in uh, anti-infective agents like uh, newer antifungals and latermovir newer antivirals. So those uh, things are helping improve supportive care. I guess the main way we could improve the outcome in transplant is by changing the conditioning regimen and certain things that are important in the myelofibrosis specific environment. So the first myelofibrosis specific uh, uh, problem is these patients have big organs and due to extramedullary hematopoiesis. Uh, this is, makes then uh, engraftment delayed. And one of the ways you can improve outcome is to use peripheral blood stem cell instead of bone marrow. Uh, the, the engraftment rate is better with stem cells and most centers would use peripheral blood for patients with myelofibrosis. Second uh, is how do you deal with big spleen? And in days gone by, uh, some would recommend that we should uh, take out the spleen, but now we have a JAK inhibitor uh, agent, ruxolitinib, and I think uh, it, it, there is some good data, some data to suggest that uh, uh, reducing spleen size with JAK inhibitor prior to transplant does improve the outcome. And certainly if that is uh, feasible, should be done. But the next thing as, as transplant doctors, uh, what we can do is change the conditioning. And uh, because of big organs and their attended morbidity and mortality, reduced intensity was felt to be a better way to go. Uh, and there is that there is good data on both reduced intensity regimen, fludarabine and busulfan, and fludarabine and melphalan uh, that have uh, shown uh, uh, good outcomes. Uh, we ourselves have improvised the fludarabine busulfan regimen, first by using pharmacokinetics of busulfan. Uh, we have increased the amount or the dose of busulfan we can give to these patients. And the next step was uh, we give busulfan over a longer period, so over a two or three week period. With this uh, innovation, we are able to deliver myeloablative dose of busulfan to this older patient at a uh, very safe, low rate of treatment related mortality of 10% or so. Uh, the other factor that leads to treatment-related mortality is graft versus host disease. And post-transplant cyclophosphide phosphamide has reduced the incidence of severe grade three and four uh, acute graft versus host disease and uh, extensive or moderate to severe chronic graft versus host disease. So we combine that with a longer regimen and now we get uh, a very low treatment-related mortality of less than 10% severe acute GVHD of less than 10%, chronic GVHD extensive or moderate to severe of less than 10%, and that results in 80% or higher survival at two years. Uh, so, so combining, uh, making few uh, novel changes, uh, outcome for patients with uh, myelofibrosis, can be significantly improved. Thank you.